Dr. Stephen Kaplan is here now talking about benign prostate hyperplasia and giving a lecture on predicting the future. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. So give us a little insight into BPH as it relates to the future. Well, it's interesting because uh, predicting it is going to be a challenge. In fact, uh, as part of my talk, I went into ChatGPT because, of course, they know everything. And they answered me, we don't know. So I figured, all right, well, I'll give chat Gaplin GPT, and that means uh, we're gonna, we, we may not know what's gonna happen, but we're gonna be confident, at least in predicting it. Uh, and I think we have to really define what that actually means, and I'm gonna be defining it differently, and try to be a little provocative, and have uh, more thought-provoking uh, ideas about where we're going in the future. Let's talk about more specifically the idea of treatment in the future. I think really what we need to focus on is before we actually get to therapy, what are some of the other things that we can actually do? So for example, uh, better information. We'll also talk about our, uh, our really doing better with underrepresented uh, minorities because we're not catching those patients as well and I think there's a lot of great opportunity. We'll talk about diagnostics because I really think that's the exciting place. Try to get patients in earlier we learned from COVID, people would rather not come into the doctor's office if they can't. So why not develop diagnostic ways of patients to actually give their diagnosis remotely? So we'll talk about some new technologies, very, very cool, uh, that actually are doing remote care. I mean, I'm wearing here an Apple Watch so I can transmit my heart rate and blood pressure. Well, hopefully we'll be able to transmit urologic information in the future. I, I have no doubt that that's going to happen. In fact, now uh, Medicare has given a, a code for remote care and, uh, and remote monitoring. And looking at technology that are going to allow that is going to be very, very important. So we're excited to, about the diagnostic side. And yes, there are therapies. There are the current therapies that are out there. And, um, and I'm a little bit of a contrarian. Um, but I think a lot of the therapies are guided not just by the data, but by reimbursement. So I think as reimbursement changes, uh, all of a sudden the scientific data may be less relied on. But we're excited about some new technologies, for sure. So I'm the principal investigator for something called Optalum, which is a balloon dilation. We're kind of excited about it because it's the best data we've ever seen with an office procedure. I mean, by far. Um, so that will hopefully uh, be a new technology modality we can deliver to patients. But I think getting the patient informed, getting the patient diagnosed, and then to therapy is the approach, and that's what we'll be emphasizing. Given so many exciting possibilities, opening the door to this conversation, what do you want attendees to take away from your lecture? Oh, that BPH is a very unsettled and exciting field. Because uh, people think, well, you know, we just give a pill, we'll just do a scraping of the prostate or a laser and we're done. Hardly. I mean, the, the potential for growth in that space is enormous. And it's the most common diagnosis urologist makes is BPH. So there's enormous opportunity to actually inform patients better, to get the right patients to come in, to get the right patient to have procedures done, and to hone in on that. So there'll be new therapies, new diagnostics, I think it's a great time if people want, from an innovative perspective, from a patient perspective, and from a urology perspective, it's a great place to be. You've gotten the ball rolling for both physicians and patients. Thank you, doctor. My pleasure. Thank you.